Good morning. Welcome to the house of the Lord. On a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being no energy, 10 being a lot of energy, I'm letting you know I started off the morning at a 6, and I'm at like a 9.5 now. So this could get a little interesting. Doesn't make any sense, because it's the fourth message, but Jesus is here. The presence of the Holy Spirit has been thick here. The Creator God is here, and it's a joy to reflect in His Word. Please pray with me. Lord Jesus, may the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our Redeemer. Jesus, we love you because you first loved us. In your name, amen. If you're watching online, what a joy to have you with us. My name is Tim Allman. All, not some, not part of, not just a reasonable amount of, all. All. We live in a compromising culture, a sometime, not all the time culture. And it may sound like this. I had the best intentions to drink 100 ounces of water and to eat food that comes out of the ground. Well, processed food is just going to happen for me. That's just the way it goes. I have the best of intentions to forgive and to reconcile and to encourage all people, well, we'll see about that, if they deserve it and if I want to. Let's get super real. I have the best of intentions. James Hiley just distracted me. Your cuteness is overwhelming. Anyway, <laughs> he's less than one years old, for those of you who are watching here. Okay, so, <laughs> squirrel, on. Some of you may say, some of you may say, I have the best of intentions to be in God's word every single morning. Push-ups, planks, and the word. This is it. Oh, and by the way, I'm going to be in God's house every single Sunday. Unless I'm up the hill, then I'm watching online. Check that box. Everything. I'm just locked into these rhythms all the time. Well, if Saturday night was a little bit too intense, we'll see. Maybe don't feel like it. We'll see how good this sermon is. We'll see if I come back next week. All right, all that. We are a sometime, not all the time culture. And that's just the way it's been since the very beginning, at least since Genesis chapter 3. Best of intentions, with a bite, we want to be God, we want to run the show. Praise be to God that even when we're a sometimes people, our God is an all-the-time God, a father that runs to us when we repent of our sins, a son who gave his very life for us, who as our hearts and our minds are lifted up to the cross, to the empty tomb, we have hope and peace that blows our minds. We have the Holy Spirit that lives within us, not just some of the time, all of the time. We're some of the time people, and because of that, our all the time God stepped down into our broken frailty to take on our sin, to become sin for us, and to give us life, life meant to be lived to the full. So now in Christ, we can be more of an all the time people. It's all about Christ. Christ is our all in all. Last week, Father's Day, had a lot of fun, preached, and then we went to Nectar Juice Bar. Do any of you ever go to Nectar? I like Nectar. It was two for one on Father's Day. Yes, yes. And then we went from there. The only thing that keeps me from going sleepy time in the afternoon is nine holes of golf with the five of us. It's the first time we did 105 heat, crazy time. I got back home, and then Alexa really surprised me. The best gift of all times, PF Flyers. Check it out. Sandlot style, super cool. I even feel more cool preaching this message because I'm wearing PF. That's totally not true. Anyway, but they're super comfy. They're super comfy. So I got PF flyers, and then I went to watch a movie that I loved growing up, Aladdin. How many, all Aladdin, get that, see, A-L-L, -L, all. Hey, Aladdin, how many of you love Aladdin? Anybody seen the new, the new one? Show of hands to see the new one. I was waiting the entire time. We don't go to many movies as a family. It's expensive, right? But I was waiting the entire time for this one scene. A whole new world. <laughs> oh, a dazzling place, a marvelous space. That's not the words. For you and me. It's awful theology, but it makes me all warm and cozy inside. I don't know about you. Awful theology. 
And here's why. I wanted to stop in the middle of this song because it was the cinematography, just glorious, right? I don't care that it was a green screen. It was just glorious flying around on that magic carpet. I wanted to stop after the song, after drying the tears from my eyes because of the beauty, and then say, hold on. It's not a whole new world. Unless you say it's a whole new world for those who are in Christ, loved by Christ, sent by Christ, mobilized by Christ. That's the only thing that makes this broken and fallen world whole and new. Again, it's Christ. But Alexa sat me down and dried my tears. She sat me down and said, don't do that right now. You can wait for Sunday. It's a whole new world, church, because of what Jesus has done. He is our all and all. It's a magic carpet ride. You know, with Aladdin, though, and in that movie, as well as in American ideology, our American worldview is Aladdin. You're amazing. You're good enough. You're smart enough. You can make life happen on your own. And doggone it, Bart, people like you. You know what I'm saying? You, you have it all within yourself. It's all about, it's meism. I am on the throne of my own life, radical individualism. And Christianity, what's found in this book, refutes meism. It's all about Jesus, the sinless Son of God. And because now it's all about Jesus, we can reject this scarcity mindset. And if you ever struggle, you don't have to show hands because that'd be embarrassing. With a scarcity mindset, here's what it kind of sounds like. It's Eeyore theology, by the way. Life is so hard. When's the next bad thing going to happen to me? That guy's mean to me. I just want to stay in my house, eat bonbons, and stay in my cozy jammies all day long. This life is so hard. Now, let me say this. I'm not... <laughs> who eats bonbons, right? I'm not saying that depression and anxiety... The ups and downs of life is not a normal thing. It, it, it is. I'm just saying that a, a scripture like this from the word of God has the ability to take you up and out of your Eeyore theology. This, oh, this scarcity life is so hard. To an abundance mentality right now. It's now theology. Right now is the day the Lord has made. Right now you get a taste and see that the Lord is good. Right now you get to love other people and be loved by Jesus. It's all right here for you. The kingdom of heaven in all of its fullness has stepped down into time and space right now for you. So Eeyore, just kind of down and glum. Turn that frown upside down, man. Jesus is here, and he loves you. He's pursuing you. He's for you. He's in you, and he's moving all around you. Do you have the eyes of faith to see it? Because that's it. It's all yours. Forgiveness of sins, life, salvation. It's yours, even if you got any of your personality from time to time. The abundance of Christ is yours, whether you feel it or not. It's a beautiful thing. So the Apostle Paul is pretty amazing. Do you know where he is when he writes this book to the church at Colossae? Colossae, 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 throughout this sermon series. Colossae, do you know where he is? No one laughed, that was weird. Uh, do you know where he is when he writes this, uh, this letter? Which is the shortest of his letters to the church. By the way, you're welcome for that, four chapters. Uh, do you know where he is? He's in jail. He's in Rome. If there's a man who could have an Eeyore perspective because he's unjustly in jail, it's the Apostle Paul. And yet as you listen to his, re his, his writings, there is joy, there is hope, there is a future that is to come, all centered in, in Jesus. So a little history on Colossae. Many of you probably don't know, it's in modern day Turkey. It's in the, the Lycus River Valley. It's just about 100 miles to the east of Ephesus. And a crazy thing is this, Colossae, along with the town of Laodicea, which is mentioned in the book of Colossians, we're going to see it today, both cities were destroyed in a huge earthquake in the year 60 AD. Do you know what year, roughly, the Apostle Paul writes his letter to the church at Colossae? 60 AD. So he is firmly grounding the saints in Colossae who are going to lose everything in this world, 
Laodicea would be rebuilt, and the town of Colossae would not be rebuilt. 2,000 Jews from the second century BC were there in Colossae. All of them would be scattered to other towns. And so here you have the Apostle Paul speaking words, rooted and grounding them in the finished work of Christ their Savior. So since it's on a highway there in this Lycus River Valley, you had numerous ideologies or worldviews or theological teachings that were coming into the church there at Colossae. And many of them were seeking to lower the divinity of Christ, lower the divinity of Jesus, that he was subordinate to the Father. He was a God-man in the way that you or I, if we're good enough, if we're strong enough, if enough people like us, if we do enough good, that we could become a Godhead. And so he is, no, 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 no. Jesus is the invisible God made visible. He is the one that breathed creation into being, and all of creation is by him and for him and to him. To see Jesus is to see God. So he is speaking against syncretism. Someone thought in the last service that I said secretism. That's not it. S-Y-N-C, you know the rest. Syncretism, okay? Syncretism is the blending of multiple worldviews all into one. You can have your truth, I got my truth, all blended into one, live and let live. None of these teachings are found in modern day Christianity here in America. Well, maybe they are. And so the Apostle Paul is going to reorient us uh, today based on the finished work of Jesus. In Paul's letters to the church at Colossae, he used a very specific word 32 times. All. Passe, passes, panta. It's all rooted in in Christ. He is the invisible God made visible. Just a little, just give me one minute to talk about the summary. The first two chapters, much like Ephesians, Ephesians is six chapters, the book of Colossians is four. First two chapters are about Jesus, his work, and our identity now in Christ. The second two chapters are basically the so what, now what? How does my life look different? How do I love and live now that Christ has made me his own. And so we're going to take kind of a tour through four different sections, and we're going to look at four key teachings of Paul as we set off on this journey over the next six weeks through the book of of Colossians. First point is this. Pray for all in the church. Pray for all in the church. If you've got your Bibles and want to open up to Colossians chapter 1, verses 11 through 12, you can just keep it open there. Colossians chapter 1, verses 11 through 12. May you be strengthened with all power according to his, Jesus' glorious might, for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in an inheritance of the saints of light. All power, all endurance, all perseverance. You are qualified now to share in an inheritance. The riches of the kingdom of heaven have come down to you since you are a child of God. Next week, uh, Vicar Joseph is looking at verses 1 through, I think about 13, 14, 15, somewhere in there. And right here, verses 9 through 13, is a prayer from the Apostle Paul to the church at Colossae. It's a personal, very pointed word of blessing for the church there at Colossae. How many of you love to pray for other people? Show of hands. Love to pray for other people. Out loud. Consistently. Laying hands on them in a non-weird way. Do any of you do that? (laughs) I think we need it more and more. The prayer of a righteous man or woman has great power and effectiveness in its working. You're not righteous because of your own works. You're righteous because of the declaration of Christ. And so therefore, pray the Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in all the baptized, all the redeemed. So therefore, pray for one another. Pray for one another. Our prayer and healing service is being Uh, rebranded the petition. It's a worship service, friends. I think a lot of times you hear healing and you're like, what, what? Snakes and weird stuff going on? No, it's just people with the gift of intercessory prayer coming together. If you come to this gathering, you don't have to speak. You can just receive. And if you've got a place of brokenness, we all do, you can be prayed for by by our prayer warriors. And it's not crazy. It's super simple. This is all you need to do. 
And so maybe join me. This is my friend, Lori McClellan. She serves at La Mesa, loving everyone there in a powerful way. And so extend a hand of blessing as we just pray for and over Lori. Lord Jesus, Lori has been filled with your spirit. It's a spirit of power and love and self-control. Your spirit rests upon her, and may her lips be anointed to point all the broken, the marginalized, the hurting, the joy-filled, and those who are weeping to you, Jesus, the author and perfecter of her faith. I thank you personally for the way she is modeled for me and for this congregation. Love, intense love for all. May the fruit of her work, all empowered by your spirit, bear a harvest that many would come to know you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's super simple. Parents, Pray over your kids. Husband, pray for one another. Pray for all within, within the church. It's a powerful thing to do as the people of God. That's our first point. Pray for all the church. Point number two, all things were created through Christ and for Christ. Move ahead to Colossians chapter 1, verse 15 through 16. He, Jesus, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created. In heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. Here you have the Apostle Paul directly contradicting the Colossian heresy, which sought, as I said, to lower the divinity of Jesus. He's a man, or if he is a God, he's a God in the way that we could all aspire to be God. Now, are there any such false teachings that are present today? Do you know of any? Well, there may be a few. The first one, and when I wade into this, a couple disclaimers. We love as a people of God all people. We have more in common with the Muslim who does not understand Jesus being the King of kings and Lord of lords than we do with a righteous, holy other God. Does that make sense? And so the way we treat our Muslim or our Mormon neighbors, this, we are created beings, We are not the creator, and so we love all people, and yet we speak the truth in love, and we disagree agreeably, and there are some teachings that are leading people away from the finished work of Jesus, and one of those teachings is from Jehovah Witnesses, Jehovah Witnesses. This is from their their website. Jesus' opposers accused him of making himself equal to God. However, Jesus never claimed to be on the same level as Almighty God. (laughs) <laughs> it's kind of what got him killed. Who do you make yourself out to be? Only God can forgive sins. Go, your sins are forgiven. You are healed. Jesus is crucified because he says to see the Father is to see me. John chapter 10, verse 30. I and the Father are one. To see the Father is to see me. Now, Jehovah Witnesses, sometimes we get hung up on verse 15. He is the firstborn. You see that? Firstborn of all creation, see, there was a time that Jesus was created. Well, can anything that has been created bring something out of nothing and create it? No, the Apostle Paul is connecting Jesus to the divine creator, God the Father. To see Jesus is to see the Father as the creator. And oh, by the way, he is now taking the place of of us. He is the firstborn. Do you know what that means? That there is order and structure, and Jesus ranks above all of us. He is the firstborn that steps in the place of the first Adam, and therefore he takes our place as, as well. It's so good. So he's not saying there was a time when Jesus was not. He's simply saying he is the one who has stepped into our place and done what we could not do, and therefore we have access to God the Father through him and him alone. Lovingly question any religion, teaching, or teacher that seeks to lower Jesus to simply human or created status. While there may be some nuances, there definitely are between our Jehovah Witness neighbors and our Mormon neighbors. Unfortunately, a lot of our Mormon neighbors as well lower the divinity of Jesus. Jesus is subordinate to the divine nature as found by the Father. Neither of these two teachings are biblically, confessionally, historically accurate to the true confession of the Christian church. And oh, by the way, there's really nothing new here. This is the same controversy the church was battling 
in the second, third, and fourth century, is Jesus God? Is he connected to God? Is Jesus Lord? It was the Arian controversy that the Nicene Creed came out of, as well as the Athanasian Creed, which firmly centered Jesus as the second person of the divine trinity. To see Jesus is to see God. He is our all and all. Yet lest we be too hard on Jehovah Witnesses or our Mormon neighbors, there are more subtle false teachings that creep into even the American church today, maybe even into this church here at Christ Greenfield. Relativism and pluralism. Relativism is a view that ethical truths depend on the individual or the group that is holding those truths. There is no absolute truth. Our truths can even, this doesn't even make logical sense, our truths can actually be diametrically opposed, and yet both can be true. This is a tough view to hold because Jesus, and what I've just said, Jesus becomes pliable. He's just a source of truth. But that flies right in the face of what Jesus says about himself. I am the truth, the way, the access to light. Jesus makes those exclusive statements about himself. Pluralism is closely aligned with relativism. Pluralism is a theory that there is one or more realities. You get your reality, your little universe, and I get mine. Live and let live. And who gets to determine your own reality? You. You're the God. You're on the throne, not God. God doesn't step in. You don't need him. It's all about you. Now, I'm not sharing either of these heresies, relativism or pluralism, in order to build pride in you, unless that pride is firmly in the one who has claimed you, who is Christ, the King of kings and Lord of lords, and there's no other way to the Father except through through Jesus. Point number two, all things were created through Christ and for Christ. Point number three, now you have all the riches of Christ from Colossians chapter 2. Paul says, for I want you to know how great a struggle I have for you and for those at Laodicea. Check that out, remember Laodicea, the earthquake. For Laodicea and for all who have not seen me face to face, that their hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love, to reach all the riches of full assurance and understanding and the knowledge of God's mystery. There's also a teaching at this time, this mystery, this gnosis, this higher understanding that you can pursue and I'm going to pursue and maybe we'll find it. Paul is saying, it's come to you, this mystery, and it's been found in the person of Jesus, which is Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures. In Christ are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Two more modern-day heresies as we're coming down the home stretch: Individualism and hedonism. Individualism. You're God of your own little universe. It's all about you, yourself, your world, selfishness. That's okay. Live and let live. What are some of the outlets that feed into individualism? Social media. Hey, look at me. How awesome am I? I'm saying, not, I'm, I'm saying that facetiously, okay? Just look at me. Feeds right into it. Last night before going to bed, I uh, told Alexa that, man, I am having a lot of, I'm having a lot of self-doubt right now. And then I realized well, it's probably because of the truth of what's being preached today, that there may be some ears here that's, you know what, I don't believe it. Jesus is one way, not the way. There is spiritual warfare, and then as my head hit the pillow, I literally sensed from the Spirit of God connected to the Word, that's good to have a little self-doubt, because then Jesus can become all in all. This ain't about you, bro. It's about me and my, my Word. So some of you may be saying, what's this live the journey thing about? What's this visit thing all about? You guys just want more money. You just want to get into our homes and kind of manipulate stuff. I'm telling you, friends, there are over 200 families that have had a visit about the future of this congregation. This is not my congregation, Pastor Jake's congregation. This is Christ's church, and then it's our church. And so if you've not had a visit, it's simply a friend visiting a friend, sharing the future, and getting good feedback from all of the body of Christ Okay, I haven't said this. I'm going to say it. Some people may go into the future. Well, what's going on around here? I wish they'd communicate with everything that's going on. Keep in mind, we invited you right into everything we're looking to do in the coming years. 
right now. So if you would please just fill out that card and say, I would love a visit because this is our church and I want to speak into the future. We will promptly be there in your home. Or if you're like, I don't want people in my home. I don't want people in my home. No, 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 no. Come to church. Lots of different spaces. It's all about our mission under the cross of Jesus to reach a rapidly growing East Valley and beyond. That's our journey that we're on together. Another thing that may keep you from saying, nah, not just individualism, I'm not going to do that, hedonism. Tough conversations, hedonism is what? Pleasure at all costs. The new boat, the new vacation, all the cool things, a new house, a new blah, 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 all the new things we get to do, it's about pleasure for me. We reject the heresy of individualism and hedonism. Last point is this, point number four. Christ is for all and in all through faith. Colossians chapter 3. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. Here, in Christ, there is not Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, but Christ is all and in all. Guess what it is? A whole new world. Christ is here for you. And he doesn't care about how much money you make, how amazing you are, all of these things. You are enough in him. And this message of salvation is for all. Young, old, rich, poor, male, female, Jew, Gentile, slave, free. Everyone who bends the knee to Jesus is received by Jesus. Will you boldly share with your words and with your actions the message of Christ? He is our all and all. Amen? Amen. Amen. Please pray with me. Lord Jesus, we need more of you and less of us. More of you. More of your word. More of your spirit more of your forgiveness centered in your sacraments, just more of you. So make us attuned to your spirit's voice, connected to your word, that we would speak as we hear you speak, that we would go when you say go, that we would love when you say love, that we would serve when you say serve, that we would give of our lives when you say give. You have given your all to us, and now in response, Lord Jesus, empowered by your spirit, we offer our all back to you and to others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.